smells good, doesn't it? Nothing smells better than fresh plowed ground. Well, son, do you have enough fritters? Not hungry. Israel, first plowing. How'd you like to grab a hold of those reins? No. No, thank you. This will turn down a chance to do some plowing. Spring fever. I think maybe I uh, had a little touch of that myself. the high road to Jamestown. No, Pop. Well, I, I must have taken the wrong road. You always do, Pop. Oh, why did you leave me? That's not my mother. my art with her. But you'll see, girl, you'll see. Once we reach Jamestown, and once again, the figurehead of a beautiful ship takes form under my chisel. You'll see, you'll see. Ray? Ray? I'm picking flowers, Papa. Have you lost something, boy? Well, have you found something, boy? There. Well, uh, cat got my tongue, I guess. <sighs> That's the first time I ever heard anyone say that about himself before. Well, I, I was just trying to tell you to call me Israel. Israel? That's a nice name, Israel. Oh, uh, here, I guess you might as well have this. Why, thank you very much indeed. Why, it's broken, the poor thing. Well, I kicked it. Why did you do that? Well, it's uh, still a daisy. First flower of the spring. Why, you're right. I do thank you, Israel. First time you've ever been kissed. Well, what, what, what do I call you? Ray. Ray Secord. Name for a mother. I'm the child's only parent now. I'm glad to meet you too, sir. 
that, that is, I, I, I mean... I know what you mean. I know what you mean. The heart speaks to the artist. Jamestown. Maybe it was night. Well, that high road's well marked and wide. To cut off to Boonesboro, you have to hunt far on a sunny day at high noon. You know artist. Artist? Well, I'm not much of a seaman, but I doubt this thing could lead a rowboat across a sheltered bay. <laughs> You're right, sir. You're absolutely right. You are Mr. Boone. Seacord. James Secord. I hope you'll call me James. Daniel Boone. Dan. And I thank God that you will not entirely comprehend what I'm going to say to you. But this... This is meant to be my dear dead wife. I'm sorry. No, hear me out. This face... No, no, not this, but... With her face. It looks out beyond the bow split of the Paquin and the sea raven, with her fair hair blowing in the wind, and red lips open in a smile. Why, even here, landlocked, you must know of the sea raven. I, uh, I remember seeing a painting once. Yeah. Sir Ives had it in his room. Last time he was here. <laughs> her captain, you know, and others, many more. They trust to her beautiful, clear eyes to take them through the most terrible storms. And never, never have they been betrayed. I felt that I, I mean, my hands could never forget that face. And yet when she was lowered into her grave, in a rosewood box, in which I carved her face and name, and our dear daughter's face and name, my two braids, and then the earth covered her from sight. <laughs> Death does terrible things. Hopefully time will take care of him. This may sound strange to a man like you, but I'm not ashamed, I'm not proud, but I'm not ashamed to say that I'm a weakling. I reckon that's up to the man himself. You have no means to understand. See, while she lived, she gave me what I lack. We loved. We were like one person, she and I. My genius boomed. I mean, Maine and New England shipbuilders and captains begged me to carve their figureheads so that give their vessels beauty and good luck. But afterwards, those who had wooed and honored me shunned me. But I could not blame them. Well, there's a silver lining to the darkest cloud, they say. And they're absolutely right. Let me tell you what happened. The Jamestown shipbuilder who admires talent and uh, is not aware of my reverses <laughs> has been assigned to build the royal governor's new flagship. <laughs> That's a... Uh, I'm sure you're aware of that. A day of glory for these colonies. 
You're, you're going to carve the figurehead. Yes, even though the Admiralty insisted on a London sculptor. A man, mind you, a man who fears to paint the flesh he claims to create, knowing that life's own hues will, will reveal the death in his cold heart. Can you imagine an unpainted figurehead? Oh, well, we don't get to see many ships. Bland-eyed, salt-whitened, aging oak. Well, we're certainly pleased for your sake. For the ship's sake, for the sake of the country. I can see it in my mind. Look at it, Dan. A younger, fresher Bray, freed from the grave ceremonies. Oh, it's beautiful. It's glorious. I shall be rich. I shall be famous. London will honor me. If only I had not missed that cursed road. Well, that's, uh, that's one tragedy we might be able to remedy. What do you mean, locked in here in this wilderness? Paul could put you back on the high road. There's a time element attached to my arrival. If I'm late, then that London wood butcher will show you a shortcut. I'll put you back on the high road, and you won't have lost much time. Oh, if only. Please, I don't want to offend, but I couldn't help but noticing. You know, we could spare a sack of flour and a couple of sides of bacon. And a sugar head. Yes, and a sugar head. You're very kind, but I you're really charity, I, I know. Thank you. Please don't look at it that way. Well, I'm not much of a judge of figureheads, and uh, I trust that you know your trade, so when you get rich and famous, you can pass first off. But right now, let's get you on the road to Jamestown so you won't lose your job to that wood butcher. Ezra? Well, right, right, too? A child always goes with the parents. There you are, Ezra. It's just puppy love. It's no worse than a busted leg, and it heals a lot quicker. I know. I've had some experience. Israel. This, would you, Mr. Seacom? Uh, Don't wait for Papa to help you, Mr. Bill. He doesn't mean to leave. And if you did, you'd just find another wrong turn in the road and end up right back here again. Bray, dear. Bray, dear. Bray, dear. Bray, dearest. Papa, you do make me laugh. Papa, I'll stay here despite of you. Sleeping in your bed, gobbling down your grub, Swilling down your rum and telling you how much he loved my dear mama. Don't let her go with him. She suffered too, both of us. Oh, my dear daughter, my, my poor little girl. Only you know how dearly I love you. You don't. How deeply I need you and how much you could do for me. I could do for you. You could be my strength, like her. And I could be whole again. I'd give you love and protection. Israel! Sharper than the serpent's tooth. If there's any snake around here, it isn't hard, you! Israel! Ray! Ray? could almost do with a drink after that. I, say, I think I could almost... Yes, I heard you. Some of the toughest woodland I know. Takes patience. Yeah. Who 
lose your patience, get mad. Freud, all you got is a bunch of splinters and a stick. I know. He's older. Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to show respect. It's a general idea. Why? Why? You don't think so much of him yourself. Well, that's not the question. Well, is an older writer every time? Well, is it? You pose a pretty hard question. Why? I'll tell you why if you don't know. Mm, I don't know what you mean. I'm older, too. You're not always right, are you? No, and I don't pretend to be. That's why you and I can talk these things out. Don't make a joke of me. I never intended to make a joke out of you, son. Puppy love. No worse than a busted little egg. trapping is? No, I'm busy. Girl trapping more fun, eh? Pasco Jr. Pasco's my old man. You're more my size than his. You want to get your head punched in? Yeah. Oh, that's real. Yeah. Come on. Anytime, at any place, I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be waiting. Finest to Rennick and Rosewood made with these very hands. <laughs> I got your knapsack all packed. All right, where's Ezra? Oh, I've never seen that boy quite like this before. You've never seen Ezra at this age before. <laughs> Why don't you have a talk with him? I did. And? Did I ever tell you about my first sweetheart? Many times. <laughs> you know, ever since I talked with Ezra, I haven't been able to remember her name. Rosalie Annette McKnight. How'd you remember? Her father was a sober Pennsylvania mechanic. You know, I never gave a thought to what he was. Oh, all right. Is our uh, self-proclaimed artist rumming it up at the tavern? 
Oh, he's sleeping it off from yesterday. It's all right. Perfect. I wish Posco had stopped pouring that rum into him. Oh, he will. He's just working up to one of his practical jokes. If you help me move the table back, I'll walk away with you. All right. You get the money in your hand. I'm sure he gets his paws on it. Money, Daniel Boone. The trampled soul will take care of itself. question what well, when you didn't want to go inside the tavern is that because your paws in there so often I don't know sorry I asked no it's all right listen then did your pa really carve the sea ravens figurehead why do you ask that pa doesn't think he ever could my father's an artist he's a genius I remember him when he didn't have time for a tap. But you said... Everything he made was wonderful, beautiful, and until... Until your mother died? Until I killed her. Kill? I don't mean like that. He took from her and took from her until there was nothing left. She had to die. And then he cried and said how much he missed her. How could she leave him? Hey, come on, don't cry. <sighs> It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Come on. Ha ha. Why don't you kiss her? Go ahead. Kiss her, why don't you? Come back, Israel. Israel! Israel, get up!
morning, Sigurd. Should I mind? <laughs> it's your turn to buy, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, fellas. Step up to the bar. The greatest is firing on the island. Just a minute, please. Well, then, of course, it is my turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, Lord Dad, chalk up my friend's drinks to me. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to have cash, Secord. Then, Lord, when I get to Jamestown. I am sorry, Secord. Well, as you see. Well, how about our drinks, Greatest? You ain't backing out, are you? I fulfill my obligation, sir. No matter how trivial. <laughs> <laughs> this will go down in history. Yeah! Come back with a cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll be back with the money. We'll cry as a dog. Go to buy it. Well, Rebecca, you uh, bought quite a piece with me. I guess I'll be late getting home. I hate to leave you with this mess. Damn, James Secord is no Cherokee. Be some furs. Oh, yes, there they be. Well, those furs now. They, they, they ought to be paid for. Well, you can take the money, can't you? I haven't been trusted with the price. Well, I was. I don't know what to do with this. On the table or in the wash basin? Either one, they'll find it. Simon? Mrs. Boone. Oh, 
Simon, I'm glad I caught you before you left. Dan has a deck of furs for you. I got him and paid for him. Paid? Who? Fella that seems to be boarding at your place. Mr. Secord? Dolorous expression. Lanky bill, black hat. Don't seem to know which end is up. Mr. Secord. In case his mind wanders, I told him to put the money in the wash basin or else on the table. Either way, you'd find it. Thank you, Simon. I guess even he'd remember that. Come on. Thanks again, Simon. Yes, sir, that will go down in history. Ever anything to match it in this tavern? <laughs> I already told you no some 16 times. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing stops me is, how am I going to top it? <laughs> you don't know your own strength. <laughs> <laughs> the old man wasn't bad either. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for cash. <laughs> the same goes for you, Starkey. Thank you, boy. Don't worry, Starkey. Your day will come. Hmm. All right, sir. <laughs> Mr. Secord. You back already? I you promised you'd wait for me. Excuse me. Uh, thank you. Landlord, ask the gentlemen their pleasure. Well, he didn't rob a bank. Ain't one in a hundred miles. I possess a large, handsome rosewood box. Full of these? Not quite. Let me see it. It's just like any other silver crown. Landlord, as long as this pittance lasts. Pittance? You <laughs> You ain't gonna top yourself, Pasco. You already been topped right up through the chimney. <laughs> what the what? Everybody gets tripped up. Your day will come. There you are, mine host. Cincinnati. <laughs> Say, Jim, tell us again how much they paid you for the Sea Dragon's figurehead. Not as much as it was worth, I think. I'll bet they did. I bet there ain't as much as it was really worth. Agreed? 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 Now, what about the Gov's flagship? How much are you going to get paid for it? I'd hope to impress upon you that Pelf is not the artist's all. But I'll bet it's the artist's something, though. <laughs> <laughs> he bets it's the artist something that there's <laughs> You're a perspicacious landlord. Next to creation and after fame, I must admit that wealth does have its attractions. Well, famous is one thing that never have to worry you. That's right. That's right. Well, I hope you gentlemen are right. <laughs> oh, come in, Mrs. Poon. Jim is buying the town. I mean, he's buying for the... Ah! Well, I'll go in, it'll be all right. Hey, look, Ma's in there buying things. It'll be all right, come on. 
Mr. Secord, give me my money. What money? The money Simon put in your hand for Dan's furs. I don't know. I don't think I know what you're talking about. Believe me, Becky, I... I didn't have the slightest idea. Me neither, Miss Boone. He swore on a Bible he had a whole box full of it. How much is left? Well, there's, uh... That's it. Well, at least that's ten shillings you won't have to pay back. See, that was my intention at the first, Mrs. Boone, alone. You remember, you did offer. And I swear to you on my honor, that my first act when I reached Jamestown. You see, I, I used my last farthing to finance this journey. And my last farthing. No, 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 that's a lie. The people of New Bedford, they loaned. Loaned. <laughs> It was worth it to be rid of me. <laughs> so you see, my dear Mrs. Boone, you're simply going to have to wait, though. No! You pretend to be a woodcarver. Pretend? Well, a woodcarver must be a woodcutter, too, I think. We need a new outbuilding, and Dan works hard. He doesn't have time to cut the logs for it. I don't think I know what you're saying. You're going to cut our logs for us. And when Dan gets home, every last one of them is going to be trimmed and piled ready for him to build. No! Oh. Uh, Bray! Bray! Israel, wait! Israel, won't you come back here? Now, what happened? You were there, you know. She heard me. She heard what you said, and she knows what you did. What difference does it make to you what you do to kids? Bray, sweetheart.
understand now. I can give him strength. Your father? He'd kill you too. Don't be a baby, Israel. I'm sorry. I do like you very much. But come on, let's go to Papa. <laughs> I just wanted you to be safe. To throw me to the booth like that spoiled block of wood? Uh, no. I saw... I saw what you did of me. The carving. And you know that? You liked it? It's wonderful! <laughs> Papa, we're going to Jamestown. You and I! Yes! You and I! Yahoo! Get out! <laughs> You were waiting. Can't ever forget you, Bray. I won't forget you, Israel. Not for very long. Just got back. He's quite some artist after all. Paint's already dry. Do you remember that pine brush? Back to look for it. Sure made a splinter and a piece of stick out of this. Now uh, you'll make another, maybe more. Does it really stop hurting? Yes. Uh, yes, no. Maybe I ought to say. It's a part of you. Part. I don't know how to put it. In the richness of your life. Something that you can share in time. With whom? 
With your wife, if you're lucky. With your son, if you're even lucky. It's a lie. The people of New Bedford, they loaned. Loaned. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it to be rid of me. <laughs> so you see, my dear Mrs. Boone, you're simply going to have to wait. Though. No. 
You pretend to be a woodcarver. Pretend? Well, a woodcarver must be a woodcutter, too, I think. We need a new outbuilding, and Dan works hard. He doesn't have time to cut the logs for it. I don't think I know what you're saying. You're going to cut our logs for us. And when Dan gets home, every last one of them is going to be trimmed and piled ready for him to build. No! Oh. Uh, Bray! Bray! Israel, wait! Israel, won't you come back here? Now, what happened? You were there, you know. She heard me. She heard what you said, and she knows what you did. What difference does it make to you what you do to kids? Bray, sweetheart. doesn't it? Nothing smells better than fresh plowed ground. Well, son, do you have enough fritters? Not hungry. Israel, first plowing. How'd you like to grab a hold of those reins? No. No, thank you. This will turn down a chance to do some plowing. Spring fever. I think maybe I uh, got a little touch of that myself. This is not the high road to Jamestown. No, Pop. Well, I, I must have taken the wrong road. You always do, Pop. Oh, why did you leave me? That's not my mother.
hadn't, but I couldn't help but noticing. You know, we could spare a sack of flour and a couple of sides of bacon. And a sugar head. Yes, and a sugar head. You're very kind, but I you've really charity, I, I know. Thank you. Please don't look at it that way. Well, I'm not much of a judge of figureheads, and uh, I trust that you know your trade, so when you get rich and famous, you can pass first off. But right now, let's get you on the road to Jamestown so you won't lose your job to that wood butcher. Ezra? Well, uh, right, right too? A child always goes with the parents. There you are, Ezra. It's just puppy love. It's no worse than a busted leg, and it heals a lot quicker. I know. I've had some experience. Israel. with this, would you, Mr. Seeker? Uh... Don't wait for Papa to help you, Mr. Bill. He doesn't mean to leave. And if you did, you'd just find another wrong turn in the road and end up right back here again. Bray, dear. Bray, dear. Bray, dear. Bray, dearest. Papa, you do make me laugh. Papa, I'll stay here despite of you. Sleeping in your bed, gobbling down your grub, swilling down your rum and telling you how much he loved my dear mama. Don't let her go with him. She suffered too, both of us. Oh, my dear daughter, my, my poor little girl. Oh, you know how dearly I love you. You don't. How deeply I need you and how much you could do for me. I could do for you. You could be my strength, like her. And I could be whole again. I'd give you love and protection. Israel! Sharper than the serpent's tooth. If there's any snake around here, it isn't her, it's you! Israel! Ray! Ray? I could almost do with a drink after that. I think I could almost... Yes, I heard you. Better see artist something, though. <laughs> <laughs> he bets it's the artist yeah. something that there's yeah. <laughs> You're a perspicacious landlord. Next to creation and after fame, I must admit that wealth does have its attractions. Well, famous is one thing that never have to worry you. That's right. That's right. Well, I hope you gentlemen are right. Come in, Mrs. Poon. Jim is buying the town. I mean, he's buying for the town. If you want to go in, it'll be all right. Hey, look, Ma's in there buying things. It'll be all right. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Secord, give me my money. What money? The money Simon put in your hand for Dan's furs. I don't know. I don't think I know what you're talking about. Believe me, Becky, I... I didn't have the slightest idea. Me neither, Miss Boone. He swore on a Bible he had a whole box full of it. How much is left? Well, there's, uh... That's it. Well, at least that's ten shillings you won't have to pay back. See, that was my intention at the first, Mrs. Boone, alone. You remember, you did offer. And I swear to you on my honor, that my first act when I reached Jamestown. You see, I, I used my last farthing to finance this journey. And... My last farthing. No, 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 that's a lie. The people of New Bedford, they loaned. Loaned. <laughs> It 
was worth it to be rid of me. <laughs> so you see, my dear Mrs. Boone, you're simply going to have to wait, though. No! You pretend to be a woodcarver. Pretend? Well, a woodcarver must be a woodcutter, too, I think. We need a new outbuilding, and Dan works hard. He doesn't have time to cut the logs for it. I don't think I know what you're saying. You're going to cut our logs for us. And when Dan gets home, every last one of them is going to be trimmed and piled ready for him to build. No! Oh. Uh, Bray! Bray! Israel, wait! Israel, won't you come back here? Just got back. He's quite some artist after all. Paint's already dry. Do you remember that pine brush? Went back to look for it. Sure made a splinter and a piece of stick out of this. All right, you'll make another, maybe more. Does it really stop hurting? Yes. Well, yes, no, maybe I ought to say. It's a part of you. Part. I don't know how to put it. In the richness of your life. Something that you can share in time. With whom? With your wife, if you're lucky. With your son, if you're even lucky. Seems to be Borden at your place. Mr. Secord? Dolorous expression. Lanky bill, black hat. Don't seem to know which end is up. Mr. Secord. In case his mind wanders, I told him to put the money in the wash basin or else on the table. Either way, you'd find it. Thank you, Simon. I guess even he'd remember that. Come on. go down in history. Ever anything to match it in this tavern? I already told you no some 16 times. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing stops me is how am I going to top it? <laughs> you don't know your own strength. <laughs> <laughs> the old man wasn't bad either. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for cash. <laughs> 
Uh, same goes for you, Starkey. Thank you, boy. Don't worry, Starkey. Your day will come. Hmm. All right, sir. <laughs> Mr. Secord. You back already? I you promised you'd wait for me. Excuse me. Uh, thank you. Landlord, ask the gentlemen their pleasure. Well, he didn't rob a bank. Ain't one in a hundred miles. I possess a large, handsome rosewood box. Full of these? Not quite. Let me see it. It's just like any other silver crown. Landlord, as long as this pittance lasts. Pittance? You <laughs> You ain't gonna top yourself, Pasco. You already been topped right up through the chimney. <laughs> what the what? Everybody gets tripped up. Your day will come. There you are, mine host. Cincinnati. Hey, 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 hey. Daniel Boone. Trampled soul will take care of itself.
I, you're right. She, she's taken my heart with her. But you'll see, girl. You'll see. Once we reach Jamestown, and once again, the figurehead of a beautiful ship takes form under my chisel. You'll see. You'll see. Bray. Bray. I'm picking flowers, Papa. Have you lost something, boy? Well, have you found something, boy? <laughs> well, uh, cat got my tongue, I guess. <sighs> That's the first time I ever heard anyone say that about himself before. Well, I, I was just trying to tell you to call me Israel. Israel? That's a nice name, Israel. Oh, uh, here, I guess you might as well have this. Why, thank you very much indeed. Why, it's broken, the poor thing. Well, I kicked it. Why did you do that? Well, it's uh, still a daisy. First flower of the spring. Why, you're right. I do thank you, Israel. <laughs> Why, that's the first time you've ever been kissed. Well, well what do I call you? Ray. Ray Secord. Name for a mother. I'm the child's only parent now. I'm glad to meet you too, sir. Well, that, that is, I, I mean... I know what you mean. I know what you mean. The heart speaks to the artist. That's it. Well, at least that's ten shillings you won't have to pay back. See, that was my intention at the first, Mrs. Boone, alone. You remember you did offer. And I swear to you on my honor that my first act when I reached Jamestown. You see, I, I used my last farthing to finance this journey. And my last farthing. No, 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 that's a lie. The people of New Bedford, they loaned. Loaned. <laughs> it was worth it to be rid of me. <laughs> so you see, my dear Mrs. Boone, you're simply going to have to wait, Lord. No! You pretend to be a woodcarver. Pretend? Well, a woodcarver must be a woodcutter, too, I think. We need a new outbuilding. And Dan works hard. He doesn't have time to cut the logs for it. I don't think I know what you're saying. You're going to cut our logs for us. And when Dan gets home, every last one of them is going to be trimmed and piled ready for him to build. No! Oh. Uh, Bray! Bray! Israel, wait! Israel, won't you come back here? Now, what happened? You were there, you know. She heard me. She heard what you said, and she knows what you did. What difference does it make to you what you do to kids? Bray, sweetheart.
real. Papa? The road to Jamestown? The road away from Jamestown. We've got to hurry. It won't be easy. Come on. How much farther is it? There he is! I just wanted you to be safe. To throw me to the booth like that spoiled block of wood. Uh, no. I saw... I saw what you did of me. The carving. And you know that? You liked it? It's wonderful! <laughs> Papa, we're going to Jamestown. You and I! Oh, yes! You and I! Yahoo! Get out! <laughs> You were waiting. Can't ever forget you, Bray. I won't forget you, Israel. Not for very long. <laughs> 